Our Father in heaven, we're thankful once again for many blessings of life and another day to be on this earth. We thank you for the blessings that you have given this county, for its people. These folks sitting around the table, I pray a blessing on them and their families as they continue to do their work. Lord, we ask that you uh, bless this country. We know there are a lot of things going on that uh, if people would just look heavenward, a lot of the answers they'll find, if not all of them. And Lord, we ask that you go with us and forgive us all the sins. Amen. Amen. Oh, anybody wish to take public comment? Seeing nobody, we close that and we'll turn to make note as much laws. All right. Um, we've only got one item on the agenda tonight. It is for. Oh, wait a minute, Chris. I'm sorry. We've got a set of minutes when they go through. I can't help you there. Motion to approve. Oh, no. <laughs> Motion second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, now we'll turn it over to Ms. Lodge. All right. Yeah, we've only got one um, item on the agenda tonight. It is um, CSDG is representing um, Wilson Business Center. It's at 2525 Lone Oak Road. Um, they're requesting 23 units of SFU or sewage flow per day or up to 8,050 gallons per day in reservation to build a spec development for three distribution warehouses. Um, the property being referenced is MAP 138 parcels 32.02 and 3203, which contain approximately 59.91 acres, and they're located at 2525 Lone Oak Road. The property, to staff's knowledge, is still currently owned by Robert Lanham. Um, the applicant will have to correct me if that has changed hands. Um, staff has been in contact with the city of Lebanon officials to discuss this proposal with them. The city has completed their review and fee calculation. The fee letter to the developer from the city is attached in your packet. Um, all sewer access fees payable to the county for each proposed project will become due prior to the issuance of final approval for a specific site plan and its related capacity commitment. There is a 10% reservation fee that is due within 30 days of this approval that is non-refundable if capacity is not used within two years. The committee has previously reached an agreement that is a standard timeline policy should be put in place for each of the sewer access reservation commitments that are approved. As such, staff's understanding of this commitment is that any approval of sewer reservation will be for a period of two years with an extension of an additional two-year reservation with presentation and approval of each site plan for the property in question. So this is your total breakdown of the sewer payment. At present, you have 223.43 SFUs remaining at the Couchville intersection, and that is outlined in the final sheet, which is the table, um, just to give you a running calculation. This request is for 23 SFUs, and if approved, um, the remaining unreserved for the Couchville intersection will be 200.43 SFUs. Um, total payment due to the county, for this proposal, fully built out to capacity would be $460,000. Um, $46,000 of that will be reservation fee and escrow will be due within the first 30 days of an approval. An assessment of this situation, staff does feel that the property qualifies for connection permissions from this county based on the knowledge and the bylaws for this committee. Um, I do want to note that this request is um, for the whole site. Um, once final site plans are stamped, staff would like to see the updated numbers for each facility to ensure capacity has not been exceeded, and that is just an estimated SFU per building as they get site plans approved. That way I can lock, I can keep a tally of it in my system. Um, but they are requesting, this estimation of 23 is for all three buildings that have been proposed in this master plan. They don't have any approved site plans of yet on this site, so this master plan that you see is just what was approved in concept with the C4 zone. But the SFUs are approved for the site, not a specific building. Christian, would it be appropriate that if the <coughs> site plans do come back, if the, the SFUs change for them to come back for this year? I would, I would, I would require that. if. Like right now, and they're not necessarily locked into three buildings, but like if building A ended up using 12 and then building B used 12 and that puts them at 24 already, I would, well, let's just say 11, so it's not, I would make them come back before I approved any sort of site plan for building three. I will not um, 
and I would, if they submit that, I would make Planning Commission aware of that. It would be up to them to either make that contingent upon a sewer access committee approval or make them come back to this body first. Just making sure. Yeah. Commissioner Evans? Yes, sir. Um, one thing I will say, this was a speculative rezoning, so I don't think they have an actual user in mind as yet. They may or may not have a user in mind when they begin construction of the building. So, they may not have a user so, in mind when they finish construction. Right, that's correct. So, so you may end up with a speculative building that they'll have to recalculate based off the design values, I guess, for that size warehouse based on an average somewhere between heavy industrial, or not heavy, but, but shift work, industrial use, and warehouse use uh, for some sort of projected calculation. But even after they get their site plan approved my point being because it is speculative if they don't when they build the building if they still do not have a user in mind there may still be uh an opportunity um, to greatly exceed the to, to greatly exceed the sfus and that the audit would be the only leverage we'd have to catch much like lebanon does and go back and repay so just making that point um and there's not i'm not saying that to to, to poo poo the sewer access committee because it's been rezoned it follows suit that we should probably from my opinion yeah. probably yeah. go on and, and grant approval i just want y'all to be aware of some of the bugaboos with this unique one of the arrangements on of, sewer access of doing it this way is if they get a building approved for building a and it uses a specific thing by the time they get maybe a building b site plan approved or finalized for building b Hopefully at that point they would have a tenant in the first building. I can't say that that's the case, but maybe they will, and we can go back since it's it'll probably end up being the same developer for all three. Ask for an updated usage flow or prediction for the <coughs> building based on the tenant that they have at present, and I can keep the best tabs on it I can at that that route, which that'll be a little more accurate. That way we don't have to rely solely on the audit and hopefully get ahead of it with that instance. So, so, Christopher, right now, based on what they're asking for, if my numbers are right, they'd be asking to to make a 10% of $460,000 payment? Yes. For $46,000? Mm -hmm. $46,000, yes. Yeah, it would be the earnest, earnest payment, and that goes into a different fund, is that right? Mm, no, fortunately, the 15, additional $15,000, uh, that 10% of that goes into a different fund. The original five thousand still goes to the general fund. Gotcha. Yeah, um, let's just go on and deal with this and we'll have this discussion. I think you got the same thoughts I would say. It's a dead horse that we keep beating. Uh, so we will entertain a motion on this. I don't think there's a guy. I'll make the motion if nobody else does. Anybody second it? I'll second it. All those in favor of say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> now, I think this has brought up some new area for us in this conversation. First thing being, I think we're getting a cart before the horse. Being in front of this committee and they haven't even got their site plan. If I could, I, yes, sir. I, I appreciate the time yeah. tonight. Um, we we did run a site site plan was approved by planning. Yes, planning. there was a site plan approved okay, by planning. Yeah, okay, there, there was. Yeah, yeah, we waited till we okay, got through planning okay. commission to bring it yeah, to you. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not been stamped approved for construction. That's yeah. right. Well, we're, I'm we're still I, going I through road commission approval and, and but storm water have, approval. It has done been in front of planning. Yes, sir. Yeah, that is right. And their plan is to construct all three buildings in sequential order. One after the other, all at one time. So, can you speak the ownership? I, that was going to be my next yeah. So that's core five industrial properties. Um, you would know them as developing the uh, Walmart facility up there off Big Drive. Uh, so they have been in the county before, just not through the sewer access committee. Uh, great group. We really enjoyed working with them. Um, they. Christopher's right. They haven't closed on the property yet. They're trying to get all the well, permits. That, that's the portion of it that when they right. get a jury outside from it. So, so who, being that they haven't closed on the property, who are we granting the access to and who do we expect payment from? It would come from Corp 5 something. Would be my 
Is that mm. kosher? Attorney? Well, to me, it needs to be in the name of whoever owns the property. Yeah, it'd be best. Um, the day the payment's made. You know, you can go back and make your motion subject to the ownership being in the proper place. When's the earnest payment got to be made? 30, 30 days? Today. Are they going to close in the next 30 days? I mean, y'all can work that with Mr. Ball, but all these. So, it, it, may I ask, it, the approval would just be in somebody's name. It doesn't really matter who brings the check, right? I know. So, if it's to Mr. Lanham, for instance. Yeah. And they work, would y'all be granting him that if y'all failed to close on it? He would have that 10% in his favor because we're not going to give it back. Well, glad it's somebody else's $46,000, right? <laughs> <laughs> as long as that's understood. Right. I mean, but, but yeah, the, to me, it ought to go into the property owner's name. How do you grant that to somebody on a piece of property that doesn't actually own it? I mean, I, I don't think that'd be correct. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not one of those things that runs with the land. It's It depends on what the site plan is going to be. and. Can't disagree with you. Maybe in the future. You well, that's why I say I think we've already got the cart before the horse on this one a little bit. Uh, and then the, and I understand there's some value to getting this done for a seller before you sell. You know, well, the sellers, the seller apparently wanted to get a site plan approved before he bought it because he's already been through planning with the site plan yeah. and gotten permission already. from Lanham yeah. to do so. so yeah. yes. Could they not come and ask for a commitment from us before the before they close and give them? But now I mean, not a commitment that would last for months. You know, thirty. Or I mean, we got days. two. We got a two-year <laughs> reservation, and then we've got the ten percent they got to pay in thirty days. But what I'm so, saying, could Joe not come to your office in this case here and ask for a commitment, and y'all put us together and us give a commitment if they purchase the property within so many days, uh, then we'll grant the access and I grant the check. So you're saying like your I, I sort your of approval understand both sides. They don't want to spend forty six thousand dollars or forty three whatever it was and something follow through on their uh, site plan or purchasing the property and they'll be out the money but uh, well I mean I don't necessarily know where the check comes from but I mean if if you came down and said you wanted to make a sewer access payment of $46,000 and you were adamant that that's what you wanted to put it for, we're going to accept your check. We don't necessarily care who the name on the check no, is. I understand that, but it's, it's done on but the property. who gets credit for it is the question. Yes, sir. <laughs> is the property under contract? Yes. Yeah. So is it subject to getting this approval? Yeah, and as you all are aware, the, big, the national builders, when they come in, they want every permit in hand prior to closing on the land. Uh, the intent is for them to close before the end of the year, this year. But now we've not run into, into this before, have we? We've not granted yeah. access to somebody that hadn't owned it before, have we? Um, 452, I don't know, I don't know if that group owned all that property or not as yet. Yeah, they owned it originally. Well, I think Rollins. No, Rollins did, yeah. Rollins. but the people that are purchasing it. Okay. But and I think they're the ones that made the payment. People that are purchasing. I don't know who made the payment, but we granted it to Rollins. The, yeah. fa the family made the payment on that one. Oh, they're all so didn't know okay. Come At the time, the Tom didn't know anything about anybody buying that yeah. property. Yeah, okay. We it to them. I didn't anyway. Who's from the family? No. I, I, I may just be confused. Well, this, is, this is done. Here. We voted on it, but we just need to kind of not make mistakes that could cause a problem in the future. We're doing our best not to. Well, I guess our attorney needs to tell us how to handle that. But I mean, to are you are you worried that like if like since Lanham is the owner, he has the capacity and he could take it to a different site? I just know that a person owns a piece of property ought to be the one making application, or or Joe should be here representing him. Got it. <clears throat> Well, I, mean, I, I don't see it right. CSDG was the representative on the application. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. And I can see, you know, the buyer may not want to make a deal until he knows that this is in place. I can understand that. And, right. you know, they're, they're still contract subject to this 
being done, but still they resolve the issue you're talking about. I guess. Let me let me throw this out there. In the event that they didn't close and they were paid the money, are they just out that money and that's the end of it? Unless they sell it to somebody else. And well, yeah, see, I don't money. think we, we're not in the commodity business. No, be, that's trading. true. They'd have a two-year. That's, that's one of the reasons I act the way I act about this. Well, they, they would have a two-year reservation on the commitment but until it was gone. The, but if they yeah. don't own the property, they don't but have it, a but, but when it's gone, it's, it's just it's just it's like when it. if a two-year expert <coughs> fires, that initial deposit is gone. Yeah. That's. But for whatever reason, it's if like they, earnest money. If they didn't ultimately wind up purchasing the property two years or not. I mean. Yeah. They're out the money. Mm -hmm. Is that understandable, Joe? Yeah. I mean, is it a problem? Yep. So to to your earlier point about the reservation versus the commitment, right? Yeah. We obviously we've seen the other uh, rezoning going through across the interstate. We know know from the Rollins discussions that capacity is starting to dwindle away at the Capitol Station, right? So part of it was we didn't want to come early, so we felt bringing the site plan in and getting that through planning was a good first step. Um, but to your point. I think we would be okay with a commitment of the 23 SFUs for well, now six the reason months. We, the reason we put the down payment in place is because people would come out right. for that commitment right. and had it forever, uh, right. four years, I guess, was the time. And, and then we'd reduce it to two. And be out anything. Yeah. And that, that just kind of makes the cheese more binding, as the old saying goes. Yeah. But what I'm saying, uh, if you came in, 30 days or 45 days or 60 days before you're closing mm -hmm. and uh, ask for this approval and it would, you know, you'd have so many days from y'all's closing to purchase it. If not, you wouldn't get it. Right. Uh, that, Do you want site plan approval in all cases well, before that? I mean, you've got, maybe, maybe. That's typically how it That's goes. typically how it works, but yeah. I just want to make sure you're not saying they come in get a commitment and they've not submitted a site plan. No, no, know. no. Uh -uh. I mean, how, how would, they couldn't even get a number from the city without a site plan. I wouldn't think so. Right. And that was the deal at the uh, College Bowl at 840 with the convenience market, that we, future convenience market we had. It was, we'll give you the trucking facility, but when you bring the site plan, we had developed your site plan, bring it For back. For the retail frontage on that? That was right. Gotcha. Yeah. That was a big sewer user. Are they moving forward with the retail side? Uh, portions but it keeps it's like in flux weekly and then the third part i think what high school was bringing up a minute ago is uh, uh, i understand the city has made a recommendation here but it's based on square footage of buildings that may not may or may not be built is that what's getting us in trouble on this audit Sebastian? no not necessarily i think what's getting us tr in trouble on the audit is because Almost all of these, almost all of them, not every one of them, but almost all of them are speculative. Mm -hmm. And that causes us problems all the way from number of parking spaces all the way to usage. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference in water usage on an industrial user versus somebody that's got seven tow motors rolling around between racks taking down dry goods to ship off in a truck. Mm -hmm. um, um, some of the, number one, some of the manu light manufacturing uses may use water. Um, but secondly, if you've got three shifts going 24-7, those employees are using a lot of water just going to the bathroom or getting water out of the kitchen or, you know. Well, I understand, uh, that, but that's back to my, that's where that, uh, that's, the problem with that's, audit's coming from. I think, I think the problem that you're seeing uh, to where Lebanon does an audit and says these people are using 10 more SFUs than they paid for has everything to do with the initial speculativeness of the of the development that we're getting, I think that's the, I think that is the ninety percent of the what's causing that uh, variance uh, in in uh, what people are coming in and getting reserved versus what's being actually used. So and in some in some cases, there may be under usage um, if it's a total warehouse use uh, from what they initially paid, but. Uh, but either way, on both sides of that, I think it's because we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what's going on in that building. 
Well, with the audit that the city claims they're going to do, well, that's every year now, is that going to solve our problem? It, well, I mean, if, if that, yes, I think it should, if as long as people are willing to come back after the fact and pay. Well, that, I, that my, leads me to this. Does that need to be put into the contract we have, Mike, with the county? That it would be audited on an annual basis? I think we, we put that, we in, put our that in, a, in our approval letters now. Mm -hmm. the, the, and when I say that, the problem is, if I'm, what's a, what's a, well, Core 5, Core 5 builds a speculative warehouse, and Core 5 builds it, but then they immediately turn around and, I'm just as an example, they turn around or Panatoni, they turn around and market it, and you may have Thermo Fisher go in there or, or uh, Aldi and, or Schneider Electric when, when all said and done, and the, the building itself, the space, could have been just as easily used for um, an Amazon distribution facility. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a big difference in water usage there, and there's no... Well, I understand, but, but there's the office no, should take care of that. that it, it, it will, but even with what we're putting in our letter of approval, that commitment is, is being kind of tattooed on the, the initial asker, which is Core 5 or Panatoni. It... It's, it's a question of whether or not it actually gets in their deed of lease or sale that says, hey, by the way, if you overuse water, you're going you're gonna to get, get deemed for a, a, an afterpayment. So my, my nightmare scenario would be somebody goes and talks to uh, pick somebody, I don't know, Wilson Sporting Goods or something, and says, hey, you're overusing by, you know, 56 F SFUs and at $20,000 a uh, uh, an SFU, that's that's a pretty significant chunk of change. And these people said, well, we didn't sign up for that, and we're not going to pay it. And they're going to lawyer up and take the score. <laughs> yep, I'm just thinking about that, too. Is something you need to study on? Let's talk about next time. Well, yeah, but I'm uh, just thinking when we have a situation like this, do we make them bring their contract in? The owner bring it in, so I've got a contract on this for these particular people. And uh, uh, we approve it subject to the contract being fulfilled, you know, being, being closed. Mm -hmm. And even do we, uh, could we, uh, to keep down, and I'm just thinking out loud, mm -hmm. to keep down your nightmare scenario, what if we uh, uh, recorded our approval letter in the registrar's office that it's binding on the front? No. Uh, that might be, if, if it could be something that would be like a, Kind of like a cloud on a title or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about. That would that would make sense to me. Yeah. And keep in mind, guys, that part of the reason this is so confusing is I don't know of another one of these committees anywhere in the United States no, this right is, now. This is this unique. is pretty unique. My question uh, is, well, how would the city handle it if it was their bill? Uh, well, they they're going to charge them for the design and tap fee and capacity, which they already do mm -hmm. right now, and then they bought their auditing. And they're going back after them, so they would have the same conundrum we would on a speculative building. Yeah, yeah, we could. I mean, we've got one or two that. I mean, you know, when you over by a portion of a unit, but there's one or two that's pretty significant. That's been good for a long time. Adds up to a lot of money. So they'll come up. You talked about three or four different things here, all related, yeah. obviously, to the same thing. Uh, you're looking for a foolproof way to protect us. Well, we problem, don't do it, everybody else The, the do. problem is we, we have a certain amount of capacity, yeah. and, and the city has the pencil with, with the audit. Yeah. So if they come up and say somebody's over 10, we lose over 10 units and we don't repeat anything for them. Is there any problem recording if it expires in two years? No, I don't think so. Um, they never own it. If, at that point, right? I just don't know if it would still remain attached to the title. Well, it will until somebody releases it, yes. So are we going to, if we record, are we going to have to tickle and go back and release them if they don't exercise their reservation and the, and the seller hadn't sold it yet I suspect they're going to let you know that hey this is a cloud on my I'm trying to sell it and the two years has expired I want this release so I can sell it I think they'll let you know that 
or they'll come back in and re-request a new yeah. reservation. I want to talk to Jackie about what she would have me reported as. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you take something new in there, they look at their book and say there's nothing in here, so I won't record it. Mm -hmm. So we need to have that discussion with them. She just, does, does it take actual notice on that, though, if it's been approved? Isn't the notice through the office? I mean, the, what got approved? Isn't that where the notice? I mean, it I'm is, not saying but, not record it, but. But what, what they're talking about is the audit. If, if we've approved 23 and they use 45, right. and the person that buys it says, I didn't make that deal, you know. And, and it's, on the, it's attached to the title that they closed on yeah. with this letter that says, by the way, if you overuse, we're coming back to charge you. They can't say they didn't know. I mean, if it's recorded, of yeah. course, but I. The other thing to do is make it subject to, and I don't think I like this one as much, make it send your letter to the seller and say, this needs to be included in the contract and the deed. Well, I think we're, right. we're already kind approval. of implying that with them, okay. but when There's we when we discuss it, we'll and it's, it's in the letter too. That, okay. Yeah. We may be doing all can, we can. Can you, per, maybe the next time we meet, bring a copy of a, uh, reservation approval letter so that they can yep. maybe it might, smoke it, might it over. Be a good idea. I'd like to get one myself. Send it to you. Just so, just so they see what we are sending out. Because we've told you, but I mean, it might be better for you to be able to see it. You might have a suggestion. Well, that's, well, that's the thing. The attorney to look into it and pull it back to us. <laughs> yeah, remind me every time you see it. There'd be a lot of grass growing down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Mr. Chairman, we talked about going in the capacity of the special account fight. And we've all seen and gotten calls from different ones about the pumping stations and the trouble that they're having. Well, was there a, a point in time when we need to, to have some conversation with the city of Lebanon or some representative of the city department and just to get their take on what we're doing. And well, I mean, I know from the county standpoint, we've got these units and, and they're ours to do, the, to do with, but if we're if, continuing to, to contribute to a bad situation until something gets fixed, yeah, we need to know that. Well, well we do. Said, I don't know if it means anything, but I went by there today and there's probably 12, 15 people down there working. At the, the Stewart's Ferry one? Yeah, no, I don't know if that. The, um, they still have the little auxiliary pump. Uh, that's what I say. The pump's still there, but they may. There was enough people around there; they were doing something. I don't know. Well, the the question becomes: Is it something that's important enough, not only to this committee but to the county commission, that the county would ultimately come in and expend capital expenditures to to partner again with the city to improve those pump stations, or do, would you rather? do what we've been doing today, which is tell a developer, hey, we're going to approve this subject to you working with the city to pay for pump improvements. Um, and and at some point it may become important enough to you for economic development purposes or whatever that the county, I mean, the county one time once spent money to get the sewer line down there. Um, so it may be worth consideration by the county commission about going back to the well with the city and saying, hey, what can we do to um, improve the pump stations in partnership with y'all and perhaps improve and get additional capacity uh, out of it? I don't know how much Lebanon will be, uh, and I can't, I know we're videotaping everything, but I, I really don't know how much Lebanon will be willing to talk about additional capacities. Um, but because it is a finite commodity we have, that might be a conversation y'all want to have with them whether or not they want to. Such a discussion probably ought to be held out, outside yeah. of a committee meeting and see what they think it is. And yes. Then bring it back to the committee as to what can be done. Right. Anything else? Matt, make one more motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.